I'm Megan. I'm Colin. And this is Pet Sitter Sitter Confessional. Confessional. An open and honest discussion about life as a pet sitter. Brought to you by Time to Pet. Do you have to quit your day job if you're still interested in pet sitting? How do we bring the aspects of process improvement and operations management to bear in our businesses so that we run better? Julie Frederick is the pet sitter of Boise, and she never stopped working her other full-time job. After starting in 2003, she's since grown to have over 20 employees that work under her, covering all of Boise and the surrounding area. Today, she joins us to talk about how more growth is not always better, and that at times we do have to just decide to be the leader in whatever we do. We jump into the middle of our conversation here, so let's get started. I have an area around me that's um, just eight miles down the road that is... I could double my business if I expanded there, but oh, I'm just like, I just don't know if I have it in me. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's like so much work. So, yeah. yeah. And yeah. they have no, like, they have no pet sitting businesses there. Mm. So it's like people are always calling and I did hire somebody there. So, but I'm not, I haven't been advertising it because I'm a oh. little nervous about it the possibility so <laughs> yeah the biggest, the biggest thing for us is the um uh, is just client behavior right now is educating on that uh, oh, I, yeah still, of the the i mean everybody we've talked to every time i've given a presentation or anything to business groups or things like that um it's amazing uh just you know still to me this day of people who go i never knew this was a thing um because yeah. every, everybody takes their dog boarding to boarding right. or stick in these things and so we're coming in and that's the that's the biggest hurdle to overcome is kind of breaking some of these habits or these mindsets yeah uh, and, and just trying to do that through education and being good community members um but that's you know it's hard because people don't know what they don't know yeah i that's why i think rover has actually been good for our business because mm-hmm. people have heard that that's not a thing you know people coming to your house they scroll down and we're in the organic search so there you go you know it's like, <laughs> <laughs> that's what i think that's my theory anyway <laughs> no i think I, I i agree i think it's it's just elevated the awareness and, mm-hmm. and general acceptability of allowing yeah. somebody into your home and you know i get it all the time you know we're we're out here again at a very you know, rural area we service um rural part and i get a lot of comments when we tell people about our services when they go i thought that they'll say i, I thought that was only a, a big city thing i've only heard uh, of that big cities and okay. all of a sudden there's this novelty and such to it where yeah um, like and they're intrigued and it's kind of this um this luxury, right. That we can get kind of bring to people and they see it as such. So it's been, it's been an interesting, uh, interesting time. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of in the unique, um, thing here where this is one of the top growing areas in the nation. (laughs) And I'm like, there's only like two pet sitters professionally Mm. and there's a shortage of kennels. So, ah, we we are very selective of who we take right now. I had 55 employees before COVID, and now I have 35. And as for March, we're up about 50% over March 2019. Whoa. So my people are really getting tired. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I don't have, I don't do any advertising. Um, you know, people call for boarding and then I'm like, we don't do boarding. They call for boarding all the time. I don't know why, because it's nowhere on my website. <laughs> but, oh, I know. Uh, yeah, but so, some of them are like, nope, it's got to be boarding or I'll stay home for my vacation, you know. But other people, like, I'm like, well, we don't do boarding. We come to your home. And then I educate them. And there, some of them are like, oh, I kind of like that idea. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> but we get some of those, too. Yeah. But um But right now we're just taking flexible cats for like the next, for spring break. We just, we can't handle any more dog business and um, we're packed to the gills. (laughs) So, yeah, in a unique, a unique position here. But yeah, yeah, it's it's also a hard position though, because um, 
the area is very spread out. Um, that's why people start, you know, have big ideas and then they start pet sitting and they're like, they get tired of running all over the place, you know, before they can hire. So. Yeah. Well, even once you do hire, right. I, I know we, that's something that we've basically had um, discussions with almost on a weekly basis with our staff of them going, Oh, I'm getting requests from these people or these people or these people. And I'll say, how far away mm-hmm. are they? And they're like, Oh, they're 15, mi- they're 15 miles away. And I'm like, no, mm-hmm. no, I, I know it's all, I, I, I get it. It's, it's this hard struggle because you don't want to quote unquote lose out on this business. I but, know it. But at the end of the day, it's like, that's travel time. That's gas. That's a messed up schedule because now in order for that one, that 30 minute visit yep. or whatever, it takes you an hour yep. and 15 minutes total. And I can't, now I can't optimize you or, so maintaining that small service radius is really, man, that's hard. That's really hard to, to conceptually is, stick to. Yeah, it really is hard. And it's, I was, you know, 20 years ago, I was younger and I was crazy. And I, I did all that. Um, I, I ran the wheels off my car, <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, so did that kind of stuff and other people are just like once they get a taste of it um they're like ah, not doing this I, I you know but anyway yeah, yeah it's been it's been a quite an, an interesting ride <laughs> so <laughs> well i know for us it's been hard uh because we're marketing to kind of a larger town and our service radius is directly in that town but there are a lot of mm-hmm. these, these bedroom communities outside it yeah and that that's where actually all the pet parents <laughs> parents are uh but yeah. it takes forever to get to them right and so yeah. all of a sudden yeah. it doesn't make as much sense so it yeah it, it's been hard to find the people who actually live in the town and work in the town and need us in the town versus i know it. areas it's it is like i like i was saying that area that's eight miles down the road yeah um it's booming and I think it's actually going to become bigger than Boise. Um, it's all Californians and they're working remotely and, but the area is like really spread out. And, um, we had a client that moved there and she got kind of, you know, a little upset with us because she, she swore that we said we covered that area and we're like, no, we don't. (laughs) And so like, just to appease her i we took the visit and i drove and drove and drove (laughs) like to get out there and and i saw like the sprawl going on and you know just like wow we really need to come out here but Mm. it's i don't know if i can deal with this i'd have to hire 20 people right off the bat (laughs) yeah and then then they would be working consistently you know until we grew the area so and that is definitely a hard part to do is this chicken or the egg kind of growth of do I try and build up the business and then take on staff or do I have the staff to then take build up the business so that I don't miss out mm-hmm. on opportunities. But yeah. you know, for, for us, it's hard because we, you know, we hired first and then have been working on building things up, but it's hard on, on staff and helping them have a consistent schedule and in those early days versus the other way around. Yep. And yeah, it really takes a person that it's like, I, I, I first, you know, promoted it as supplemental income Mm. and I got some good people, but now it's, I have like probably like five full-time people and the rest are part-time, but yeah, it's, it's a puzzle for sure. (laughs) So that's good. Well, (laughs) Julie, Julie, sorry. No, you're fine. No, I, I love this. This is all good. This is golden. Uh, I did want to give you an opportunity to introduce yourself and a little bit about about who you are and, and what you do. My name is Julie Frederick, and I have a pet sitting business in Boise called the Pet Sitter Boise. And I started it in 2019. Or I'm sorry, what year is this? 20, 2003. I don't know where I got that number or that <laughs> year. Um, but anyway, um, I was in between jobs and going to school and I started like pet sitting in my home sort of, and it just kind of grew from there. And then I got a job, you know, after I was laid off, I got a job, but they were doing random layoffs. And so 
I thought, you know, I don't feel very secure doing this corporate thing. But I decided to grow my business. Um, I didn't get laid off that time, but I wanted more security in something I could control. And I got a website and I was shocked at like how the business took off after I got the website. And so I just kind of poured myself into it. And um, that's what we do. And we do vacation visits mostly, but we do have a, you know, probably 20% of our businesses midday, um, midday visits. You know, you've been in business since 2003 ish, kind of yeah. right in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What, you know, that, that's pretty early on in the pet sitting days. How did you, wh- when did you first realize that pet sitting was a thing or how did you have that idea that that was the thing you wanted to try? Oh yeah, that's a good question. Um, I first, believe it or not, I first heard of it. I was, um, you know, I was laid off at work. I had lots of time and I was at the groomer and I was just kind of hanging out with my, my groomer while she was grooming my dog and just kind of, there weren't a lot of jobs back then. It was a really bad job market. And she goes, well, why don't you, um, why don't you think about pet sitting some more? And she goes, I have this book, and she she went and got the book, Pet Sitting for Profit, and it was like the corner of it was chewed off by a dog. And she goes, you can have this book. It's really good. And I read it, and I'm like, wow, this is pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I just, that's the first time I heard of it. And then I'm trying to think um, how, I just started Googling it, I think, or mm-hmm. just, and learn more about it and just uh, made up my own thing. Um, and then I made my own website probably, but I, I, I first took cards to the vet that, you know, I'm old. So this is like 20 years ago, started networking with vets and things like that. Mm-hmm. And um, I, yeah, I just, um, I joined PSI and learned from that, learned, went to a convention and that was weird because everybody was just like me. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're all like cut from the same cloth. Yeah. So, and then I, um, after three years of solo being solo, I, um, I started with independent contractors and I did that for several years. I had 11 of them and then I, I couldn't sleep at night anymore. So I switched to employees um, that was the bit best move I ever made in my business. If anybody wants to know more about that, they can contact me. The Pet Sing for Profit book, it's, it's amazing. That was published back in the late 80s and mm-hmm. how, how it really helped shape a lot of the, the perceptions and mindset about what it meant to actually run run a business, right? And view what we do as a business. Yep. Yeah. And one one piece of advice in that book was that you should start pet sitting part time, and not everybody does that, but I think that was good advice because um you know it really gives people a taste of pet sitting um you know don't go quit your corporate job right away, just do that you know <laughs> so um and that's why I do I still have my corporate job and because i I like it and it's flexible um and it gives me a an outlet besides pets, which I find valuable. <laughs> um, yeah, Julie. I, Julie, I did want to ask you about your about your background and, mm-hmm. and kind of what your, your your corporate side of life, the corporate hat that you wear, and, and how you think that impacts or does or doesn't your your, your pet business and, and how you operate it. Uh, so my background um, is I have a degree in chemistry, and I I done a lot of engineering work um i'm not a i don't have an engineering degree um so i work at hewlett packard and i um i i'm like an analyst um i do like intellectual property um management it's not really that impressive of a job to be honest but um it's it's flexible it's low stress and uh, I like it. And then I have an MBA that I went back to school when I got laid off and I got the MBA. Mm-hmm. So, and I think that has really helped me in my business, actually. So, 
there's different aspects of that. There's the business aspect of going, okay, uh, I I need to understand how business structure works and some of the ins and outs of, I'm sure, you know, the finances and, and marketing mm-hmm. and those things. The, 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 the chemistry, the engineering background, do you feel like, um, I, I guess a question for that is when it comes to things like operations or process improvement in a business, does, does that does that play a role in how, how you view and, and run your pet sitting? Actually, yeah, it does. Not, I've never really thought about it in that respect. But um, so my engineering background is process engineering, and I do see the value in in process. And I'm always looking for different ways to improve the process. And I have a 50-page SOP and I actually look at it often. <laughs> and, um, you know, like I try to streamline every process um, and like the hiring process. And I have a very structured hiring, you know, interviewing and hiring process. That's really been helpful. Um, yeah, I think anytime you can you can streamline a process or make it better, it's going to help the business. For a lot of different reasons, right? There's just, first off, the thing that comes to mind is whenever I'm more streamlined, I'm I'm usually more profitable because I'm not wasting time and or money to get something done. Uh, I'm also able to satisfy my staff and and help them have a a better schedule. Uh, And I'm, I'm able to meet my clients' needs better because I have these things ironed out. I gave a, yep. a, a talk to a local business group recently and I had a gentleman come up to me and he, he said, you know what, I really like your, your operations of your business and I think you're managing them well. And it sounded so weird and foreign to me because I don't view what we do in those kind of terms or those kind of lingo. But on my car, yeah. car, on my car ride home, it really hit me of like, oh, yeah, I mean, that's all we, That's all I do. I, I'm, I'm constantly looking at operations. <laughs> I'm constantly yep. looking at uh, optimizing routes, and I'm optimizing my time and my schedule and my day. And th- yeah, it was really kind of uh, uh, empowering to me. And, and and I don't think we use those terms enough in the pet business world of who are you, you know, improving your processes because we don't yeah. think of it in those terms, right? We don't approach it from that, but that's, that's almost all of our planning and scheduling. That's what that actually is in our businesses. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, a really good point. And another thing is um, that I'm, I'm constantly finding holes in the process too. Like, mm-hmm. um, you know, like yesterday, somebody left the door unlocked and the client said something and she goes, Oh, I thought the door o- o- locked automatically. <laughs> I'm like, really? I wonder where we missed something there. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, but, you know, I'm constantly, this business has so many details that you got to have some structure. You have to have a starting place at least. And um, it really sets us apart from the hobbies. Well, hobby sitters are fine too, but like from friends and neighbors, say, you know, yeah. um, you know, people, our business is peace of mind, you know? Um, and if you have a good process in place that the clients get used to that, they expect it and they value it, mm-hmm. you know? So, um, yeah, process is definitely important. Yeah. Well, so for you, I, I, there's a lot of different aspects here, but when, when you sit down to review a process, what, what, what is, how, do, how does your brain start parsing out what's there and, and problematizing what's before you um, when you try and make yeah. something better? Um, well, I'm trying to think. Okay, so for, I'm just going to take, for an example, payroll. And, uh, okay, here's, here's one that I'm really looking at right now is um, credit card processing. So we do 80% of our business, people pay by credit card. I'd say 80 or maybe even more. And right now I have to, um, to you know, I have my own merchant provider and I, it's a little bit cumbersome. Um, so I'm looking at if I had, an admin do this would, you know, there's lots of room for mistakes and there's, 
or misunderstanding and, you know, like how to match, you have to match the credit card up with the, the charge and all this stuff. So I'm seriously thinking I was grandfathered in, um, so I don't have to use the time to pet uh, credit thing, but I, I'm mm-hmm. seriously thinking of going to it just for simplifying things. And um, one thing that I think I'm not really good at is looking at the um, time aspect of things. Like, sure, it's going to cost us more to go to Time to Pet, use their system, but the time aspect uh, is you save so much time and it streamlines everything. It streamlines the process pretty tr- dramatically. Yeah. So it sounds like, you know, step one, when you look at something, try and looking at it with fresh eyes, like pretending mm-hmm. you don't know how yeah. it ends and, and does it all make sense? And that's, that's big, especially whenever we are looking at something and we start being, you know, in business for a while, the, the processes, the SOPs, the things we do can start to become old hat and we know how they operate. Yeah. But the question that I, you know, I like to ask myself, if I designed this today, is this how I would do it? Is this how, and, and does it make sense to do it this way to somebody who's not me, right? If I have somebody, yes. in, if I'm unable to, and sometimes that means handing it off to somebody literally who's, who doesn't know what you're doing <laughs> and go, does this make yeah. sense? <laughs> and, yep. and then, and then, you know, Julie, you said that of like understanding what the purpose of the review is. Is it to save time? Is it to save money? Is it to give it to somebody else? Is it a combination of all three or something completely different to go, you know, it may not be saving me money, but it's saving me time. And and sometimes yeah. that's equal, but knowing the purpose of my review can help us look at those line items and go, ah, this isn't getting me to that goal. Uh, and then either removing it or, or, or changing it. Yeah. And, and what you said about fresh eyes, that is, I love that that you said that because I, um, <laughs> in a lot of ways in my, I mean, I'm, in my heart, I'm still a solo sitter. You know, I I really am. And I'm like, why am I doing this this way? I'm not a solo sitter. I have 35 employees right now. Uh, this is, you know, this is outdated for my business, you know. <laughs> and, and it is really important to really, um, really stop and look at how you're doing things. And I I think I'm getting better at that. but. I don't do it enough and I I don't realize like how big of a company it's become and um you know that the processes are they have to keep up with it. I think that's a really uh interesting point you bring up about it doesn't feel that big, right? Of like it just kind of is what it is. Uh and, and yeah. rather than looking around and going, Oh wow, like this actually is is a thing and yeah. so it's, it's interesting to when know did that, that happen <laughs> yeah, that, that you still feel like that because uh that that gives me comfort in that basically every day i realize <laughs> that about us <laughs> yes i know it's it's totally true though and yeah so it is a different mindset going from solo sitter to employees though and remembering it's not just you or just about you or just for you and that there is help out there, but there's that part of going, yeah, but I, I, I need to give them these processes. I need to give them these tools and give them these things so that they can do the job. Uh, and that starts with, with me, you know, I might not be doing a lot of the sits anymore or the, or, you know, or them at all, but I still have to make sure that my staff are, are equipped. And that starts with me going, okay, if I was in their shoes, what would I do? And, and maybe getting feedback from them. Have you heard of Time to Pet? Chris Ann from Raining Cats and Dogs has this to say. Becoming a Time to Pet client has been a game changer for us. We can give our pet services clients real-time cloud-based information they never imagined they'd be interested in. And most importantly, to me personally, I can better manage my company and look forward to more. And not a small thing, Time to Pet is responsive to my request for new features and modifications to existing ones. If you are looking for new pet sitting software, give Time to Pet a try. Listeners of our show can save 50% off your first three months by visiting timetopet.com slash confessional. You, you work um, you, mm-hmm. your, your corporate job and your pet sitter job simultaneously. Yeah. You know, I know you said you like that because it gives you something extra and some flexibility and, and exposure to different things. You know, how, how do you manage those two? 
and 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 switch between um, the the corporate job and your your running the the pet sitting side of things. Especially since COVID, um, you know, I work from home mostly now, and um, I I deal a lot with the Asian countries, so I. I, a lot of times I work at night and um, that flexibility has really helped a lot. Um, yeah, I don't know. I've just always been really lucky with this job that I have now that it's been pretty flexible and I can just kind of toggle back and forth kind of, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I think that certainly helps having the the part-time aspect, having the slightly different hours aspect because you can really dedicate and set time aside and i think you know people may be listening to that going well so you're still working and you're you're running your pet business how how do you how do you, how do you find the time for for growth and for investing in the business um well like i said i was talking to you before um uh i i have never worried about growth. The growth has just come for me. Um, I just live in an area that's growing. And so I don't have to do like the normal <clears throat> investment and time for that. I just get the calls, you know, mm-hmm. and um, I do have admin support as far as I have an onboarding person. Like all she does is call the new clients back and, you know, we have a very strict um, vetting script and, you know, we vet them, they vet us. I have that support. And then I have another admin that does a few other things. That's kind of how I manage it. So for, for you, it kind of sounds like, you know, many of us grow our business and then try and offboard these processes to step away. Mm-hmm. For you, it was basically necessary for you to offboard some of these processes and not be as actively involved with them from the get go because you still had this other position, this other job. So, so you really couldn't dedicate most of that time there. Uh, yeah. Um, but I do do most of it myself. Okay. Um, <laughs> I never really figured out how to have like a full-time manager or admin. And that's kind of my solo mindset too. So yeah. um, that's something I want to look at more in the future. Um, but the growth, um, like, I don't always see like more growth is better. Mm -hmm. Um, Like we were talking, I could grow, I could almost double my business if I went eight miles down the road and basically duplicated my business, but there's a price to pay for that. (laughs) (laughs) uh, It's hard. I think it's hard to scale a pet sitting business. Um, I don't know. Here it is anyway. I just think because it's kind of spread out at some point, like enough is enough. You know, I, I'm i happy with the income, happy with the size. In fact, I'd like to even reduce the size a little bit. So how did, how did you get to that point where you realize that enough is enough sometimes? Because I know I see all, you know, co- co- constant talk about growth, about more and more and more, doing more and more and more, getting bigger, more clients, more staff, more things. How, how do you find that balance of going, you know what, what I have right now, I'm, I'm really content with, and I'm more content with, like, this is, this is more than enough for me. Where, where does yeah. that come, where does that come for you? Um, because to grow, like, uh, what I was talking about that, that other area that I could expand to, it's kind of like you have to take two steps forward and then, or two steps back to get the three steps forward, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. and that takes a lot of energy and time and uh, it doesn't just, it's just not like a straight line growth. Um, And I, you know, I've been doing this for 20 years. I've been able to save some money. Um, I have, you know, my house paid off all that stuff. So to me at my age, it's not, um, it's not something I'm interested in covering like the whole state of Idaho. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, so I, I don't know. I've done my growth and it's just, I've been lucky. It's just kind of happened for me um, just because where I live and the ex- how, how it's growing here. So 
I, yeah, my goal isn't just to be bigger and be, you know, making a ton of money. Although I, with that said, I do look at my rates and I do, I do charge a lot compared to other options. So I'm kind of like in a saturation mode, like where um, instead of just getting more and more business, I just want to get the right clients, if that makes sense. Yes. I really, really love that mindset of (laughs) instead of getting more clients, getting the right ones. And Mm -hmm. that's, and, and we, you know, that's kind of a switch that we can flip whenever we're comfortable, right? Like, and I think that's a Mm -hmm. reminder of like, it may feel like we have to grow. We feel like we have to do these things, but at the end of the day, we don't, we don't, we don't have to go eight miles down the road. We don't have to go into the next town over unless we really want to. And, and, you know, seeing how you are going the income is there. The clientele are there. I've got the staff. And now we're, like you said, the saturation mode of like, now I can pay, pay attention to these details. I can pay attention to these yes. clients and whether they're happy or not. And I can pay attention to these little things and I can really hone and perfect everything because that part is hard when you're growing fast. The the refinement yes. is hard and almost impossible while we're constantly overwhelmed with people coming through the door and, and phones ringing off the hook. That's not the time for refinement. But we do need to refine and sometimes putting that hold on the growth or saying no more so I can focus on refinement and and getting things nailed down. That's an that's an essential part of growing a business is the refinement and the honing of what we are and and how we're going to do it. Yeah. And um, it's it's so true. And yeah, when you're just growing and you're not not charging enough, you're spinning your wheels. And um, here's some advice I want to, you know. As long as I have the platform here, <laughs> I want to give some advice, and that is decide to be the leader. For years and years, I'm like, well, what is everybody else charging? What is everybody else doing? And then I noticed they weren't doing anything. They weren't raising their rates. They weren't, you know, they weren't doing anything. <laughs> and I was looking at my income, and I'm like. I'm not making enough and I'm I'm trying too hard to stay in the middle with everybody else's pricing. And so I just like, what happens to me is I hit a wall and then I make all these, like I start flailing and I just start making all these major changes. And um, I hit a wall um, a while back and I'm like, well, these lazy competitors are not, they're not making any changes. <laughs> You know, so it's like, so I, I like increased my rate. I want to say like 25% over everybody else. Whoa. And like, I was way higher and I still am. And I had this one competitor, he even did a video and said, well, you shouldn't have to pay a ton of money for a pet sitting. No. And I'm like, I think he's talking about me, but I, <laughs> I just got to a point where I decided I'm going to be the best. I'm going to be the leader. I'm going to have the best employees. I'm going to have the best software. I'm going to have the best insurance, the best website. And I'm not going to look at my competitors. I'm going to be the leader. And I've never looked back and it's worked for me. And I, I really encourage people to stop looking at what everybody else is charging. We provide a very valuable service. And people need to, you know, business owners need to have confidence in that. And don't try to cheap out on everything. You know, it's like, have the best, have employees, have whatever the clients want. Give it to them, you know, as far as, as far as quality, I'm saying not everything, but, and that then like, here's another thing I do. Um, a really good friend and mentor of mine pushed me for years. Like, you need to have a registration fee. I'm like, no, I have to have a free meet and greet. Well, I it was in the back of my mind, and I had a couple situations where people use us like one time, and I'm like, I put a lot of energy into that, you know? So I started charging a registration fee, and nobody else in my area does that, but I do. 
And it hasn't hurt my business one bit. In fact, I think it makes it look more professional. So those are my pieces of advice. And that way, if they use us one time, you know, like they usually use it for friends and neighbors, but they're not home. Well, I didn't lose out on anything, you know, and it also gets rid of uh, the, the last minute people. And it gets rid of the, um, the one hit wonders for the most part, because those people don't want to, they want to put other people out. They don't want to invest anything. So yeah, we don't get the last minute people anymore. (laughs) So (laughs) anyway, those are my, what do you think about that? Uh, oh, uh, there's a lot there, uh, Julie. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, you know, in the middle there, you had said, you know, business owners do these things. And everything that you mm-hmm. talked about starts with viewing ourselves as a business, as operating a business. And that is really hard because we don't see ourselves as running a business a lot of times. The world doesn't see ourselves as running a legitimate most of the time. and the decisions that you have made and that you laid out there of stop looking at others, be the best, don't mm-hmm. skimp out on things. That that's talk, yeah. that, that that's a business mindset there of going. I want to provide the best service possible, and I need to be a business to do that, and I need to view how I operate as such. And there's a time, you know, when we're first starting out. There's sure there's a time to go. Where, where what are my free options? What are the things that I'm doing? How can I do this? But at some point, in order to provide that top-notch service or to provide the the best possible, you know, that takes paying for training. That takes paying for the website. That's paying for your back-end, you know, CRM and all this stuff. It it that that takes stuff. And and if you decide to step out and do that, that does take commitment, and that's really scary because now all of a sudden, what I, I used to be able to do for super cheap because I don't have a lot of overhead, I now have to to pay for things. That kind of gives me a little bit more. Uh, stake in the game about what's going on and to, to to recognize that the 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 middle of the pack will only get you so far and 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 recognizing that if you want to do things and be different that that means being a leader right that means stepping yep. out and doing things differently and that's that that does take courage right that that does take some like okay i i have to do this Yep. And we are educating, like you said, a lot of people don't know what a pet sitter is. We are there to educate them. And when somebody calls, you have to be confident. You have to be confident in your policies, confident in your product. And when you're on the phone with them, they assume that's the norm, you know, because you're telling them, you're educating them. And, uh, one thing I did when I re- when I raised my prices substantially, um, I was uncomfortable with it because of my I had this like solo mindset. Like I'm a pleaser. I'm you know that's the kind of person I am. I just want to make everybody happy. So I one of my my admin that does the onboarding, um, I she she doesn't care what the price the rates are, you know. <laughs> Like, it's not personal to her. It's like, she's, a, you know, just very professional. And so I would just, like, I would, every single call, I would just let it go to voicemail and I would just pass it on to, to Shannon. And I'm like, okay, call them back and tell them the new rates, you know? <laughs> and to my surprise, there wasn't a lot of pushback. And you know, people just assumed that was the rate and it seemed fair to them. And it is fair. It is a fair rate. Yeah. Um, so we've got to get outside our own heads on this kind of thing. And um, but if you have something like that, if you have an employee and you're not comfortable doing something they are, just pass it on to them. <laughs> <laughs> I, Megan and I do that from time to time when we're like, oh no, you send the message. Oh no, you send the message. And it's, <laughs> yeah. So we can kind of offboard to each other, but it is hard. It's, you know, and I think many of us, because 
of our backgrounds, where we come from, our passion that we have for this. Many times it's, ooh, I, I wouldn't pay that much for the service, or um, that's yeah. a, that's steep to me. Uh, but that's because of you know our our preconceived notions and how we are approaching this. And so when it comes to trying to communicate with confidence our business and our prices, if we're insecure about them, uh, that 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 comes across to a client, right? And so it does, uh, and. <laughs> You have to also get comfortable that not everybody is your client. And, you know, like every now and then we get somebody who, well, you know, I'd say we only probably onboard like half the people that call or, you know, we we use the contact form. But, you know, they're like, oh, yeah, let me talk to my husband about that. And, you know, and then you never hear from them. But you just have to get used to that salesperson type thing. Like, okay, well, next call, please, you know. <laughs> and then the next one's just like, can't get onboarded fast enough, like that you have what they want. And you just have to be, you have to get used to that mentally that you're not there for everybody. Yeah. And you're going to get a better client too, by the way. Yeah, so. you are. You are. Uh, I remember the first time somebody laughed in my face when I told them my price, and mm-hmm. it didn't impact me. And I thought, wow, wow just, good just for a couple. You. Of, <laughs> well, but like, it just like six months prior to that, uh, if somebody had done that, I would have been a wreck for like an, another year, just like so broken by it. But it took yeah. me. <laughs> but it got to the point of like, we were was totally slammed. My books were full. Uh, yeah, I, I could barely squeeze in another person, and this person was laughing at me about my prices, and I was just able to be like, "Okay, I don't need you anyway." Next, <laughs> yeah, yeah, next. And the thing is, we're not ripping people off. I mean, no. we're we're you, at any price that you have, you still have to offer value, exactly. you know. And but you can also decide that you are going to offer value you know, you're going to have the best of everything. Um, you're going to be there when they pick up, when they call you, you know, just there's a lot of little things you can do to be the best. And you can choose to do that though. Mm-hmm. And don't hang around with the middle of the pack. Jettison out of there, Get you know? <laughs> well, <laughs> and I, I like how you are also more inclusive about being a leader of of your of in the area it's more than just prices right you mentioned things like get the best insurance get the best software get the best employees it's it's a it's yeah. a holistic approach to cuz all of those things just as you said all those things provide value to the people mm-hmm. and 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 bring you raise you up and and raise everyone else around you up as well so it's more than just the pricing increase it's it's looking holistically like what aspects of my business can i make the best and then investing in those. And yeah, sometimes it does mean investing money, which means we have to have the commensurate prices to be able to invest in the best of those things. So that, it, you know, get, we start seeing this, this cycle. Yep. And, and you, you know, just really look at the return on, on the investment, like the website, you don't want to cheap out on that, you know, just spend the money and get a nice website. You know, people look at that and Anybody who says you don't need a website, I, you know, a Facebook page is not enough. You, you really need to have the full package. Well, it's about discoverability and it's about accessibility to people and going, um, yeah. I know, I know plenty of people who only search on Facebook for their things. That's kind of their little window into the internet. Yeah. I know people who are not sure. on Facebook at all. And so they need to find me in other ways. And that doesn't mean I'm going to put a hundred percent effort into every single platform that I'm on. But it does mean I right. need, to, need to have a presence so I can be found where people are looking. Right, exactly. You have to be everywhere. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, Julie, you've talked a little bit about uh, the, the pet sitters in your area. And, and I, I wanted to ask about what kind of community of pet sitters and what kind of uh, collaboration or support y- you have with them. There's only like two other professional pet sitting companies here um, that really I, I don't know I consider part of the community I guess and um yeah I've talked to I, one of them I talked to like I we don't talk a lot but I'm I'll text her and I'll say hey I send somebody over your way we can help them hopefully you can or, you know stuff like that and then another guy he has a dog training 
business and he wants to get more into pet sitting. He's doing more of that. And I like, I mean, I think he's got a good business model. He's got employees and um, stuff like that. And we, we've talked on the phone. He's even offered to training for my staff on dog behavior. Um, you know, so I, I think there's, lots of pets to go around and I'm always referring I refer kennels I refer all kinds of things to people (laughs) my my goal when I talk to a person I can tell right away like if they're a fit and if they're not a fit I want to offer them some alternatives so um I yeah I don't have any problem with I don't look at it as competition there's just there's plenty to go around that's a, a, a different mindset yet again of uh, recognizing, like you we talked about earlier, like I'm not for everybody. Uh, that could be my service area. That could be my prices. That could be the the level of specificity or training or problems that somebody is is dealing with, and whether it's an actual good fit and being honest about that. I know we've had people call us for dog walking and and pet sitting, and we've had to go. I, I don't think your dog is is going to do well in that environment. They actually may need a, a kennel, or they may need some some behavior work before we get to that point and Mm -hmm. you know it would be easy for us to just say oh sure yeah we'll help whatever we'll do whatever uh but that's not that's not going to be what's good for them in the end it's actually may put us in a bad spot if we do take on something that we kind of have an icky feeling about and just being right in front with them and going nope that this is do do these couple things talk to these people and then reach out to us after you've worked through those. We, we want to be able to do that. We want, like you said, my goal isn't to grow exponentially. My goal is to give the best pet care possible, whether that, you know, and that's whether it's with me or, or with somebody else who I know and trust. Right. We're, we're there to, you know, solve a problem for somebody. And if we can't solve the problem and we have knowledge of somebody who can, why wouldn't we try to help them, you know? Yeah. Yeah, why wouldn't we get them connected with those resources? And why why would we why would we withhold that? Uh, yeah, just for yeah. One, a couple, you know, some a few extra dollars. Like that's not doing right by the person on the other end of the phone. No, it's on not. The chat. Yeah, you know, you said you started back in two thousand and three, mm-hmm. and that's twenty years ago, twenty plus years coming up on. And the, the world's not the same though. So, from your perspective, and I, I did want to ask, how do you stay on top of? changes and adapt as a company and not get stuck in your ways? Well, I'm always trying to keep up on what's new. I I learn a lot from the Facebook community. Um, And I have a set, you know, I have some peers that are bigger companies like myself and, you know, we exchange ideas and um, yeah, I mean, I just, I, I don't know. I just a lot of different areas and I I do try to really stay ahead of the curve because I realize that somebody else could come in and you know go full guns and become a really um big peasant company in my area and I want to be ahead of that and so I do try to I do try to stay ahead you know like I time to pet you know like that's a big thing to me that's really helped my business. And you got to look at, like I said, return on investment. And um, I, I want to be ahead of the curve. And so I do, I do watch for that and I live it every day. So um, sometimes I get stuck in my solo world in my head, but overall I just try to, I try to evaluate things as I hear about them and see if they're right for my business. Well, and I love how you started off by talking about how you do that by being engaged in Facebook groups with the community of peers that are surrounding you. And that you're mm-hmm. right, we do look at return on investment. And the same thing goes with the community that we surround ourselves with. I invest in my community and that is my time, my talent, my treasure, however I'm investing in them. And you, we reap rewards from that. It's not always financially. It's a lot of knowledge. It's a lot of learning and it's a lot of exposure to things that come up. You know, I, I, yeah. do, I, I enjoy being in Facebook groups and going, huh, man, that person's encountering this problem or that person's trying this. I never thought of that or I've never encountered that. How would I handle that? What would I do in that scenario? 
And what does that mean for my business? And just kind of asking simple questions like that as you come across information or picking people's brains and just hearing their stories of what they're going through. That is invaluable to us. And that that's a that's a quote unquote free resource and way of of continuing to learn and stay on top of things that it will will pay back dividends year after year. Yeah. And and the other pet sitters love to share, you know, they like to they want everybody to succeed. So yeah, and that's where that's where we get to of, of understanding that it's yes, you know, we want success for us, but but we want to in a more altruistic sense of I want everybody to be better. I want the pet sitting community to be viewed in a better light and in a better mm-hmm. sense and have a better reputation. And, and what role do I play in that? And how can I help other people uh, raise raise the bar and get to that point as well? Yeah. And, you know, I think you have to have the mindset that um, if you give, it's not, you know, giving is a good thing. And, um, you know, there's givers and there's takers and I want to be a giver. And it's never, I've never, it's never done me wrong. You know, (laughs) Um, you, you can't be afraid that. Julie, I have really, really enjoyed our conversation today. And I'm so appreciative of your time and for all of the wisdom that you've shared and helping us to understand that giving and being involved and looking and try to try and be a leader and in new ways and mm-hmm. what that looks like for our business. Uh, I know you had mentioned about people reaching out for questions, especially around employees and, and ICs and how that works and, and other things as well. So if people do have questions and they want to get in touch with you or, or follow along with what Pet Sitter Boise is doing, uh, how can they do that? Yeah, um, you can just find me on Facebook, um, Julie Frederick, or you can Google the Pet Sitter of Boise. And that is the only phone number I have. You'll call me directly and I'm happy to talk to someone. You know, I just, um, I I like to help people. And um, if I can help somebody answer a question or going getting employees is it's a scary thing and i lost a couple ic's that wouldn't switch you know things like that that people are afraid of but um i'm happy to support support anyone and answer questions so awesome julie thank you so much and i'll have uh, links to your facebook and website as well so people can click right to those um i've really i'm again so appreciative of this julia i really really thank you so much you too it's great talking to you guys decide to be the leader decide to do the best when i had my conversation with julie and afterwards i really sat down and thought a lot about our own personal business that megan and i run about how we were implementing leadership as a pet care company what were we doing to set that bar high? How were we leading the industry from our onboarding processes to our training techniques with our staff to the software and insurance that we carry? It all comes into play to allow ourselves to give that best service possible, to be the best, to lead and to think three, five years down the line and start implementing those practices today so that we can be leading the way. It's not easy. It's hard work, but it is worth it at the end of the day if we truly want to help make the industry better, not just for ourselves, far from it, but for everybody else around us to continue to strive to do bigger, better, grander things, not merely bringing on more clients. It's not just about the quantity of clients that we have, as Julie said, but about the quality with which they help and provide our company with revenue and with our ability to serve them better. It goes hand in hand. My company is at its best, at its peak, when I am serving the best possible clients for my niche. And it takes time to figure that out. Have you figured it out? How are you being a leader in this industry? Let us know. Send us an email at feedback at petsterconfessional.com. Post about it on social media this week. Let your clients know how you are leading the industry because we know you are. We know you have things and you do things differently that more people should be doing. So shout out from the rooftops and let us know about that. We want to thank our sponsor, Time to Pet, and thank you so much for listening. We hope you have a wonderful rest of your week and we'll be back again soon. Thank <laughs> you.
I'm <laughs> sorry.